Hey there, SM. Laravel makes it quite easy for us to create real-time app. It has built-in support for PubSub pattern for WebSocket. And just a quick recap, the PubSub pattern is where there's one WebSocket server publishing data to multiple clients. So in order for the PubSub pattern to work, we need to configure a WebSocket server in our Laravel app. And thankfully, we didn't need to start from scratch. Laravel provided us a few options for our WebSocket server. The first option is to use something called Pusher as our WebSocket server. Pusher is essentially a subscription-based web service that will provide us our WebSocket server once we sign up with them. It is very easy to use and Laravel is fully integrated with it. We just need to write the configuration in a few lines of code and that's it. Our WebSocket server will be up and running since day one. But the only thing is we need to pay them for every single month. They do provide us a free plan but with limitations. Now the second option is another web service called Ably. Ably is a competitor of Pusher and it is also a subscription-based WebSocket server. They offer a very similar pricing compared to Pusher and also fully integrated with Laravel. But if you are like me, who has no money to pay for these services and my coffee, we might want to consider some open source options where we have full control and no limitations. All right, the first open source alternative is Laravel WebSockets. This is a WebSocket server written in PHP, provided by Beyond Code and Sparty, two of the biggest open source contributors in Laravel's community. Laravel WebSocket is available as a composer package and it fits in perfectly in our app. There are two other open source options, Laravel Echo Server and Socketty. However, they are written in Node, so you'll need to install Node.js before using them. The other thing about Node is that we couldn't run PHP code in these two packages. That means we can't extend and modify those two packages at the time when we need it. So these two options might be less appealing compared to Laravel WebSocket. Our final decision is very clear, we'll be using Laravel WebSocket. Now for the client, Laravel provided us an official package called Laravel Echo, which is a JavaScript NPM package meant to be run on all the WebSocket subscribers. We will discuss more about Echo in the next few videos, for now, we'll be focusing on the server side. All right, let's dive into the code and get started right away. There is quite a bit of configuration that we needed to do to get our WebSocket server up and running. All right, first of all, let's install Laravel WebSocket. We'll go to our terminal and type in Composer Require Beyond Code Laravel WebSocket. The installation node is in the package documentation. The link is in the description. Once we have installed the package, we'll need to publish its configuration. So we'll go ahead and type in PHP Addison vendor publish and look for Laravel WebSocket in the list. Seems like number two is the one. Let's type in number two. And there you go. We have just copied the migration files and the configuration files to our app. And then we'll run PHP Addison migrate to create all the tables needed by Laravel WebSocket. All right, now let's take a look at the package config file. The first option here allows us to set a port to the package dashboard. The package does provide us a debugging dashboard out of the box for us to see any incoming and outgoing WebSocket connections. Don't worry about it for now, I'll be showing you around later on. The next option here is for us to set our app's information that we want to connect with this WebSocket server. Some people might want to set up a WebSocket server for multiple apps in one go. And this is a place for you to define all the information about your apps. And this is referred to as the SOAR code multi-tenancy architecture. And the next option, App Provider, is simply a helper class for us to resolve the correct app for our tenants. You can pass in your custom provider class if you have a much more complicated logic. Allowed Origins is where we define all the addresses that we were allowed to connect to our WebSocket server. Any addresses that's not listed here will be banned from connecting to the WebSocket server. Max request size is the size of the payload that's allowed to contain in a WebSocket request. Path is the URI to visit the WebSocket dashboard that I mentioned just now. The middleware listed in the middleware array will be applied to every request visiting the dashboard. The statistics section is where you configure on how we want the package to collect data. Each of the fields listed here has its own documentation in this file. You can have a read if you want to customize the logic. The SSL section is where we put in the configuration if we want to get our WebSocket server to use SSL certificate. You will need this when you want to encrypt the messages transmitted by your WebSocket server. 
And lastly, we have the channel manager option. And this will be the class that contains the logic to maintain all the WebSocket connections on this server. By default, Laravel WebSocket stores all the connections in a PHP array. If you want to store the WebSocket connection details in somewhere else, like in a MySQL database, then you'll need to write your own manager class. Now, Laravel WebSocket is used as a pusher replacement. And that means we can still pretend that we're still using pusher. And we'll need to install all the dependencies required by pusher. In particular, the pusher PHP server. So in our terminal, I'll type in composer require pusher PHP server. Once that's installed, we'll go ahead and configure our environment variable for the package to work. Let's go to our .env file, and we'll go ahead and change our broadcast driver to pusher. And we'll pass some dummy values to the pusher app ID and pusher app key and secret environmental variables. If you're using pusher, these will be your API keys and secrets for authentication. Since Laravel WebSocket is a drop-in replacement for pusher, we're not using these values for authentication. Instead, Laravel WebSocket will use these values in its configuration to identify the app tenancy, just in case there are multiple apps connecting to the same WebSocket server at the same time. Okay, let's move on. Next, we'll need to set up a queue driver. As I mentioned before, Laravel is implementing the pubsub pattern and the whole real-time architecture is driven by event. The very same event that we have in our app folder. Whenever there's a new event fired in our app, we could choose to whether broadcast this event or not. If we choose to broadcast the event, Laravel will then send the event to the WebSocket server and the WebSocket server will broadcast the event to its client. However, the process of sending the event to the WebSocket server is rather time consuming. It is much more efficient to do the job later. So what we can do is to send this job to a queue system and we'll process the queue later on when the server is less busy. And that is how Laravel handle event broadcasting in a real-time app. Laravel provided us a few queue drivers out of the box. Typically, we would use Redis as the queue driver, but just for demonstration, I'll be using the sync driver for now. The sync driver, as its name suggests, will process the job synchronously, so there's no queue system at all. If we are using the sync driver, Laravel will send the job to the WebSocket server directly without listing them in a queue. Anyway, to set up the queue driver, we will go back to the .env file and set the queue connection key to sync, which should be the default value out of the box. You can take a look at the other possible drivers in the queue configuration file. There are other queue drivers like database, Beanstalk, and Amazon SQS on our disposal. And now once we have set up our queue driver, we need to go to our app configuration file and enable our broadcast service provider. Otherwise, we'll not be able to broadcast our event through WebSocket. All right, now we're ready to see if our WebSocket server is ready to run or not. We'll go to our terminal. Laravel WebSocket actually provided us a nice PHP Addison command to start our WebSocket server. If you type in PHP Addison, you can actually see that we have a few new commands. Let's type in PHP Addison WebSocket serve to start a WebSocket server. And we'll visit the WebSocket debugging dashboard to test if our bad boy is running or not. So let's go to our browser and visit the URL as defined in the WebSocket configuration file, which by default will be Laravel WebSocket. And you should see a web page similar to this. Let's click on the connect button. And if you're able to see this dashboard, that means you have set up everything correctly. If not, seek help. It's a good time to stop here. We'll continue in the next lesson. All right, key takeaways for this lesson. Pusher, Ably, Laravel WebSockets, Socket T, and Laravel Echo Server are WebSocket servers that are supported by Laravel. Laravel WebSockets is a wonderful open source drop-in replacement for Pusher. Laravel uses the PubSub WebSocket pattern to publish real-time app events. We need to set up a queue driver for Laravel to broadcast WebSocket events. The broadcast service provider should be enabled in the app config. Otherwise, Laravel cannot broadcast real-time WebSocket events. Laravel WebSockets exposed a debugging dashboard for our WebSocket connections. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.